Good morning folks, it is Tuesday morning the 21st of July. We're going to come and read together again this morning from the Psalms. We're going to read Psalm 27. Let's hear what it has to say. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Lo, a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the one thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there from troubles to come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path. For my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands. For they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness. While I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27. Again, a lot of, another lovely psalm, the things that, which David writes about. Uh, just have to think about the first four verses this morning. David lives in a time whenever he knows a lot of battle and bloodshed. He lives in a, in a world which uh, is, is violent. Um, how things are settled, how disputes are managed. Um, so it's easy for him to use the analogy of threatening behaviour of violence and battle whenever he talks. And the readers of the time would, would understand that. Maybe we find it a wee bit harder. But it's also very prophetic in how it speaks. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, why should I be afraid? That's so true. Jesus is called the light of this world. Uh, he's called the light on many occasions through the Bible. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes, that's what Jesus is for us, for our salvation. But when David talks about the Lord as his fortress protecting him from danger and evil people come to devour him. If we think about what Paul writes in the New Testament. About how life is a spiritual battle. About how God gives us armour to put on to protect us. And how we have to put that armour on. And about who we trust in. And we think about where that battle is ultimately taking us to, to heaven. Um, the, the Israelite nation had this image of Jerusalem being their city of refuge, their ultimate place. A city set on a hill which could be well defended, uh, which was God's place, Zion as it's quite often called in the Psalms. And if you think about that and think about um, God protecting us and even though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Quite often the people in Jerusalem felt that way. Um, whenever they were trusting in God. But God wants us to feel that all the time. He wants us always to remember that he is with us through the difficult times and that we shouldn't be afraid. In terms of he will always protect us. Yes, things may not go the way we want to here on earth and we may not have the things that we want at times and things may be taken from us. But our spiritual side, our soul is safe with God and we trust him. And he will always look after that. And no harm will come to us that way. Uh, and, and just that verse 4. The one thing I ask of the Lord. The one thing I seek the most. 
is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfection and meditating in his temple. You know, that's a verse we quite often use uh, at the start of a service of thanksgiving. Uh, whenever we're thinking about what life is, we think about the journey of life. It's a verse that reminds us that where we're aiming for is to live with God eternally, to be with him where he is always with us, always protecting us, where he provides all that we need, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's what faith is all about, isn't it? Knowing about that this life is temporary, but life with God is eternal, and knowing where we are going to. So, yeah, if you look outside today, just another bright sunny day, it's easy to see how God has blessed us. It's easy for us to praise him. What if it was a wet day outside and it was dark clouds? Would we still feel a, a brightness in our hearts, or would we feel a bit down in the dumps? Would we maybe lose sight of what God has given to us? Let's keep our eyes firmly fixed on God. Firmly fixed on what he has done for us and what he continues to do for us every day. Firmly fixed on the fact that whenever we trust him and have faith, that our desire is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Delighting in his perfections and meditating in his temple. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the promises from your word from the Bible. Lord, thank you again that we can we'll always rely upon you and know that you are with us. Lord, we thank you for the bright sunshine today, but we also thank you for those dark days. Lord, no matter what is going on outside weather-wise, you are with us. No matter how we might feel in our souls at times, you are with us. Whether we're having a good day or a bad day, you don't abandon us. You're always with us, looking after us and protecting us. And Lord, we thank you for that. We know that life is a battle. It is a spiritual battle against the powers of darkness. And we pray for your strength that we can keep our head held high for you. But Lord, thank you for where we will ultimately end up. Whenever we trust you, that we will be with you forever. In your place, meditating on your words, seeing the glory of you. Lord, help us to keep our eyes fixed upon that. Help us to have that goal in mind uh, through all the ups and downs in life. So yeah, Lord, help us this day. We pray for those who are struggling today. We pray for those who their mental health is not as good as what it should be or what it could be. Lord, for who will struggle, just draw alongside them, Lord. May they know your arm around them. May they know your peace and comfort. For those of us, Lord, who are um, in that better place, help us as we walk with others. Help us to show them your love and your peace. And Lord, just constantly remind us of that. Father, give us your strength this day, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with me this morning. Again, let me encourage you to go away and to read Psalm 27 for yourself. Just to look at it. There's a lot more in it than what was spoken about this morning. Um, even when you get to verse 11, like, teach me to live along the right path. Have a look at it for yourself. Um, and let it speak to you in, in your setting. But knowing that God always speaks to us, always looks after us, always encourages us. So take care this morning, folks. God bless. See you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.